and that's where the yellow uh, kind of handle comes into place it's a tool that allows you to transform or to move only the bounding box the transformational box and not the object itself Hello everyone, welcome back to another video here on Ghost Paper and for this one we're going to be using Procreate 5X and we're going to be understanding a little bit better transform tool and more specifically the velocity and snapping sliders and modifiers that we have here in the new transform tool. So this is part of a longer video that I've made which is my top 10 tips and tricks and even a little bit of hack that you can do it's within those top 10 tricks i'll leave it in the top right section here of this video but because it's part of a longer video i just wanted to dive in into this mini tutorial session so that i could show you what and when are the best use case scenarios for magnetics and snapping so let's just dive into the video right away so i've prepared a file for you with several broken down layers there are all these circles actually kind of look like spheres because I've added a little bit of gradient on them so that we can actually visualize this a little bit better. I don't have my uh, grid turned on just yet because I want to be able to show you a couple things. And also, I'm just going to first make sure that in the transform tool, which is quick, uh, rather easy to actually activate, is just the last option on the top left section here, the Y. We got the transform tool where we can move things around, but also scale and rotate them. So just to uh, start things off, I'm going to turn off magnetics and snapping, and I'm going to start to turn them on or activate them as we go through this tutorial. The very first mode of moving things around and even scaling and rotating in Procreate is the freeform mode. As the name says, it's rather easily to move things around. You can position them anywhere you want to. You can scale them without really uh, without respecting any of the ratio or the proportions of the element. And you can also rotate them. Um, if I just try to grab very, um, it's actually quite hard actually, but uh, trying to grab the green handle and get the rotation going. As you can see, you can rotate it with uh, like the minimal increments. It can be point something, you can be rotating something one, two, five degrees, 20 degrees. It's actually all based in the freeform transformation. So I'm just going to undo and as you can see, even this mode of undoing things here in Procreate 5X is actually something quite new. Before, it, it used to snap back into place as you were undoing steps. And now it kind of animates back each step. So it's also a little bit easier to visualize undo states now in Procreate 5X. The next mode of moving things around is the uniform. And this one moves freely as well. But once we get to scaling things around, it is done in a proportional way. Now we have distort, which actually now labels each point to be able to uh, distort things. And finally warp, which now creates a mesh that gives you even more control. This is really great when you're doing realistic paintings and stuff like that and you kind of like have your first sketch and you can kind of remodel, you, you tweak pixels. And the beauty of this is that this is one way of actually distorting the image. And the second way, as we know, is the famous liquify. But we're not going to get too much into this because the lesson is actually about snapping and um, magne uh, the magnetics of transformation. So we're going to actually head into the uniform mode. And first, we're going to start turning things on here. The first one is magnetics. So turning on magnetics, what does actually happen here around the canvas? Well, if you are uh, familiar with Procreate 4 and 5, Magnetics is a uh, very uh, famous method where we used to get, and we still do get that, the famous blue lines, and those serve us to actually move things in a horizontal way with a horizontal snap. You can go in a vertical manner with a vertical blue line, just trying to get a vertical line here as much as possible. But as you can see, it's also, uh, you, you have these uh, angle lines because it's giving us 15 degrees increments of snapping things around which also is very very helpful especially if you're doing uh, kind of like geometric illustrations anything that actually needs that sort of um, you know snapping to 50 degrees increments so snapping with magnetics is not much different than what we've been used to with procreate 4 and 5. in the way even i used to go about that or like moving my objects around the canvas i would then go into the actions menu make sure that I have my drawing guides turned on. And now with the move tool, 
I could then, because I could be like looking at the screen handle, I could know if something was that center on the screen in the uh, horizontal axis or also that center in terms of a vertical axis by just looking at the handles that I have and the uh, lines, the grid lines. An addition that I also really, really like here, and I know this is quite simple, but I still actually quite love it, is Procreate 4 and 5. If you were to pinch on your illustration, you were actually scaling your object. And this was, in my personal opinion, quite annoying. And now you can zoom in and out, but still keeping the Bezier points or the bounding box of the transform tool active. So as you can see, I'm a little lower than the dead center. Maybe it's like actually just matching this line. And now what I will have, uh, what I will say is that if you pinch inside the element, you, you get that same result from Procreate 4 and 5. So as long as you don't pinch inside the bounding box of your element, you're only going to be dealing with zoom. So I'm just going to pull this back and kind of get outside the transformation tool here. So now we've kind of taken a look at what magnetics does and it's that you know that simple the same way as we, as we've been moving things around in procreate 4 and 5. now when it comes to snapping this is where it gets or starts to get really really interesting first off i'm just going to zero velocity here and we're just going to be talking about distance in fact distance and velocity are linked together Without velocity, distance is not going to do much for you, but I'm just going to first explain what this is all about. So distance is basically you are telling Procreate how many pixels on each side of the image uh, Procreate is going to be looking for objects to snap to. So magnetics, in a nutshell, is a way to move things on axis, and snapping is a way for Procreate to detect other layers, that other objects, and help you to align these objects to the one that you're moving. So um, for example, let's go now with distance if we put it to none. So sometimes it just wants to stay on one, but now we have distance none, velocity none. So at this point, we have snapping turned on, but we don't have any data. We're not giving any variables to Procreate 5x to look for things or to help us to snap this object onto the objects that are around the canvas. Now let's just say that we put it back to around where it was. So let's just say 20. Now we're telling Procreate 5x to look for 20 pixels in all directions, in all four directions here, and try to snap this object. So now if I were to move, I would start seeing some yellow lines because blue lines are for the magnetics, yellow lines are for snapping. But we're not looking, we're not seeing any yellow lines. And why is that happening? Well, it's back to what I was just saying, how distance is linked to velocity. Let's just give it a little bit of velocity. Let's just say around 1.2. Now we're telling Procreate once again to look for 20 pixels in every direction with a velocity of your, of your movement. This velocity is actually linked to the speed that you move things around the screen as well of 1.2. I will not be able to tell you if it's 1.2 every second or 1.2 related to what but I do know it is related to how you move things on the screen and how the object also snaps on the screen so now if we start moving we're still not picking uh, too many yellow lines here so why is this the case so now we're finally getting a little bit here we get uh, a little bit of these lines and actually just a quick correction I do believe that the yellow lines are only when you reach the dead center of the canvas so now we kind of saw a uh, kind of yellowish orange line is when you actually reach the axis, both horizontal and vertical. I think you still get blue lines for the other objects that we're, uh, we're trying to align to. So what is happening right now? Basically with the speed of 1.2 and looking for 20 pixels, you're not getting a lot of snapping. Now let's just see what happens when I go into snapping into the settings here. I'm gonna put distance of 50, and I'm also going to increase this velocity to max. So this is gonna tell Procreate 5x to look for the most, uh, or the you know as many as possible snapping points, as well as with the speed. Even if we're moving super fast, the object will also be jumping quite a bit, as you'll see right here. So now, as you can see, lots of lines trying to snap things around, and also a lot of jumping of our object around the screen. So what's really interesting, in my personal opinion, I think a good use of this tool 
is to keep distance at max because you're going to be getting as much or as many as possible snapping points but try to keep velocity to a lower number let's just say 2 or 1.9 because what happens with that is that you still get a fair amount of snapping points so you still you're able to put this on the the very like the tangent of every circle therefore kind of centralizing or making at the very same center as this small circle that we have here we can put this circle on top of this circle we can snap in uh, like in many directions but check what happens when i move things faster on the canvas you're not really getting a lot of snapping points you're just actually getting a little bit of the magnetics uh, not the snapping and i think this is actually quite helpful for you to move things a little bit more freely around the screen so in my personal opinion keep distance at max keep velocity quite low so that you get a little bit of snapping without that being like very constricted as you move things around the canvas. All right, now final tip here, guys, I just made a square with a gradient as well, because I just want to show you one more thing. Now on the transform tool of Procreate 5X, as you can see, we, we have the famous uh, like Bezier points and the rotational tool, but we also have this yellow handle at the bottom. And I know that there's quite a few people out there asking, what is this yellow handle and what does it do well, to give you an example, sometimes we actually can rotate things a little bit. So I'm just going to rotate this a few degrees. I'm not even sure how much I'm rotating. But one of the problems of rotating things, especially square rectangle shapes in Procreate, is that going back into the transform tool, what was, you know, the transform points were aligned to the shape. And now once you go back into it, you see that the transform points are now kind of still as a squarish kind of facing us shape, which doesn't really align with the object. And that's where the yellow uh, kind of handle comes into place. It's a tool that allows you to transform or to move only the bounding box, the transformational box and not the object itself. So as you can see, I could put the uh, kind of like the box of points or the transform box aligned to the actual angle of the shape. And now if I go back into the rotation, I can actually undo the rotation, which was something actually very hard in the previous versions of Procreate because if you rotated this to a kind of a skewed angle that you wouldn't really know how much you rotated, uh, you would be even harder by having a transform box that didn't really align with the object. So I hope this makes sense and why now there is a yellow handle in the transformational box in Procreate 5X. So that about does it for this video guys. Hope you guys enjoyed and if you did a like it would be super appreciated as well as make sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss any of these tips and tricks, reviews, speed bank videos, and that is all to make you a better digital illustrator always. Now on the right side of the screen, there's more content for you guys to watch. One is my latest upload and the other one is a video that YouTube is actually recommending you to check it out. Thank you so much for watching and as always, I'll see you on the next one. Ciao.